Uh, my name is Angela. I'm honestly not really sure where my journey started. Um, I grew up as I'm Native American, so I grew up on a reservation, um, which is probably not something that a lot of you are familiar with. Um, but we're very spiritual, so my grandparents were always talking to me about the Creator and telling me stories, um, and that's what I grew up hearing. When I was 10 years old, um, all of us Native American children got shipped out to a Catholic boarding school because they thought that that would make us more American, I guess. Um, so I spent two years in a Catholic boarding school, and none of it made any sense. And the only thing that I really learned after the two years was that I'm definitely not Catholic. <laughs> so um, as I got older, people started asking me, they were like, so what is your religion? And I was like, well, I don't really know. You know, we're spiritual, but we don't have a name for it. It's just a way of life. It's who we are. You know, you spend your whole day in prayer. Um, the elders are always telling us that we're supposed to walk in prayer. Every step is supposed to be a prayer. Um, and as long as you're doing that, then you're living life the way that you should. But we didn't have a name for it. So it made it really confusing when people would ask, what is your religion? Um, so I started looking into other religions, and I started studying everything. Any religion that I could get information about, I was like, what is this? And eventually I would come to a point with all of them that I was like, this just doesn't make sense. No matter how many times a day I pray, I am never going to be a god. It's not happening. <laughs> um, they just didn't make sense. So time kept going on, um, and after a while, um, I actually met a Muslim and we started talking and I was like, wow, you do that? Really? Wow, so do I. And it, it just started getting to a point where I was like, you know, maybe I need to read more about this. So I went online and I started reading whatever I could um, and it all just made sense. Most of it was stuff that I had already heard from my grandparents. So it just seemed to make sense. So I kept reading. Um, and I went to the grocery store one day, and we had this little bin in the grocery store. Um, it was like books people would drop off, and they'd buy the books, and the money would be donated to charity. So right on the top of the stack was like all of these books about Islam. So I was like, cool, this is awesome. So I bought the whole stack of books, and I went home, and I started reading them, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this really makes sense. So then I decided that I was going to try to read the Quran. And I went ahead and I started reading it. And at first it felt a little bit weird because a lot of the stuff that I was reading was stuff that I had heard from my grandfather. So at first it was like, okay, this is, this is different. And I kept reading it and I was like, wow, um, I've been doing this my whole life and I just never knew it. Um, so I just got to a point that it just made sense. And here I am. Um, well, I came to his class. I found it online. <laughs> I moved to Houston, and I was like, you know, I really need to do this, but I don't want to do it on my own. So I looked online, and I found Dr. Kazi's class, and um, him and his wife have been there for me every step of the way. And I thank them and I love for it very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Jadi gerakan koperasi 212 ini saya kira sesuatu yang perlu kita syukuri Mensyukuri itu artinya kita dukung sepenuhnya Kita berusaha untuk mengembangkan, memajukan dan mudah-mudahan insya Allah sukses Karena ini sebuah harapan Salah satu memang penyakit kronis umat kita saat ini adalah kefakiran Dan kefakiran itu terjadi adalah karena penguasaan ekonomi memang ada di tangan orang lain kita tidak perlu menyalahkan orang lain karena setiap orang punya hak untuk maju dan berkembang dengan cara apapun masing-masing. Tapi kita memang diharuskan untuk sukses. Dalam Al-Qur'an semuanya kesuksesan. Alif Lam Mim dalikal kitabul arabi lima ayat kemudian ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun qad aflahal mu'minun. Jadi semuanya adalah al-falah hayya ala salah hayya ala falah. 
Dan kalau, oleh karenanya kalau kita sukses dalam dengan salat kita, tentu kita harus sukses dengan kemampuan kita memberi zakat. Qimus salawa atau zakat. Kita disuruh salat, diperintah untuk mengeluarkan zakat. Ya bagaimana caranya untuk bisa mengeluarkan zakat kalau misalnya kehidupan kita ini malah kurang dari kehidupan yang paling mendasar. Dan karenanya perlu ada usaha dan mudah-mudahan usaha koperasi 212 ini minimal lah menjadi semangat ya, penyemangat bagi umat kita ini untuk bangkit secara ekonomi. Jadi kita bisa bersatu di masjid, kita bisa bersatu dalam salat, mari kita bersatu dalam hal perekonomian. Dan ini sesuatu yang fundamental. Makanya Rasulullah ketika pindah ke Madinah itu, beliau menyatukan umat Untuk membeli pasar dari masyarakat Yahudi Itu salah satu bukti sejarah bahwa betapa umat ini harus bangkit secara ekonomi Jangan kita pandang enteng perekonomian ini Karena itu adalah bagian dari backbone, tulang punggung daripada kemajuan dan kesuksesan umat kita Saya kira demikian, saya Syamsi Ali, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi